you may want to simulate over discrete points in time rather than trying to do it over continuous time because that's just technically not possible. You cannot draw infinitely many numbers in a finite time horizon and I'm sure you would like to have an answer within finite time even if you're prepared to wait hours that's a lot shorter than infinity. The way we do that is we essentially have we started with a stochastic differential equation as a choice and you see here that I've multiplied the the forward rate that was in the denominator earlier I've multiplied it over to the right hand side and you also see I've used the factor representation here for reasons uh, um, of um, numerical expediency not because I prefer this representation so this, this, this representation here is assuming that you started with if you had n forward rates you started with n factors with n diffusion processes you still will compute a spectral decomposition of these A matrices because you want to draw you want to construct first independent Wiener processes and then from that correlated Wiener processes and you do that by um, exactly by this form of spectral decomposition. I guess we will still have a lecture about Monte Carlo methods to come and we'll talk a bit about a bit more about that then. So this is for numerical implementation reasons so that doesn't take away its, uh, its justification but uh, for numerical analysis reasons. Now, given this formulation, we want to see the evolution of these forward rates or their realization at certain points in time. For pricing purposes of the product, we only need their realizations at any observation time that in the contract, in the term sheet of the derivative, uh, has any kind of decision or event purpose. Okay? So when, when there is a coupon to be paid out depending on a you know, forward rate fixing, then you need to observe that forward rate. You need, you, you, you need to construct your path simulation over those fixing times of those forward rates. If you have a contract that every year makes a decision about a swap rate, observes the swap rate and says if this swap rate is above three percent then we're triggering in, in some other product you know some range accrual or whatever then you only need to simulate in principle from the product principle uh, basics only over these annual observation times right so there's some intrinsic timeline always built into a product contract However, we have a stochastic differential equation that's written here with an infinitesimal notation, so it really is defined only in continuous time. Since we have stochastic drift terms, remember, they depend on the forward rates themselves. That means we do not know the distribution of these forward rates, the exception being the one that pays at the same time as the numeraire, because that one has no drift. So we know that it's perfectly log normally distributed. By the way, I don't know if that startles you, but it should, and not at the same time. One of the f we, we give this thing a log normal kind of formulation. One of the forward rates has a log normal distribution. None of the others do. But if I change measure, then another one has a log normal distribution, uh, log normal distribution, and the one that just did no longer has. And still, these two things are equivalent. That's the crux of this change of measure thing something that was a log normal distribution changes to a generally not log normal distribution here in this modeling framework unlike what you're used to in equities when you're changing measure maybe with a Margrave switch or something where a log normal remains log normal here it doesn't so in a certain measure a forward rate number i may have a log normal distribution you choose any of the other measures and these are only zero coupon bonds you could even choose other measures such as annuity induced measures and then they aren't. So a change of measure really is a change of the full distribution of the underlying, not just an expectation, not just, it's not just a shift, it's a change of the shape, really, really, really changes. You need to appreciate that a change of measure is a change of measure, not just a change of drift. On an infinitesimal scale, 
df in a stochastic differential notation, it's only a change of drift. But for a um, terminal distribution, it's a complete change of distribution. That's an important thing. You won't believe how many times I have said a change of measure is a change of measure, not a change of drift, whenever somebody made the mistake, oh, I only need to adjust the expectation. No, it, that's not enough. 